Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about a really cool feature that got introduced in Chaos Scatter, and that is the Scatter Instance Brush. What this thing, this tool allows you to do is essentially art direct your scatters by painting in new instances or erasing them. Uh, this then makes art directing your scatters, as you can imagine, a lot easier. So now, how do you actually use this new tool set? Well, let's take a look. All right, so we are in our little scene here and we're going to be focused on the scatter that's in front of us here. So it's this scatter that we set up of these trees that are being scattered alongside the edge of the road here. OK, now they're being scattered on a plane uh, object or just, you know, uh, a planar object. You can see it highlighted in blue and that's the entire setup so far. Now, at this point, let's say we like the scatter, but what we would like to do is we would like to, you know, we would like to remove some of the trees here on the left so we can see the mountains in the background. OK, and this is where this new tool will come in handy. It will make our directing the scatter a lot easier. So I'm going to uh, open up the scatter that's, uh, you know, driving this entire setup. And then I'm just going to scroll downwards until I get to the instance editor compartment. I'm going to hit edit instances and now I have a choice to make. I can either use the brush tool or I can use the erase tool. The brush tool is going to paint in new instances and the erase tool is going to delete or erase the existing instances. Now, in this case, obviously, if we want to remove trees, we're going to want to go with the erase tool, right? At this point, we're also going to untoggle this erase only placed instances toggle uh, because we won't need it. And we're going to talk about it in more detail later on. But for right now, we're just going to untoggle it. OK, now, if we hover over our scatter plane, our distribute on object, you can see that we have this little brush icon happening. Now, the brush is a little bit too small for my taste. I'm going to go into the brush radius settings here. I'm just going to up the radius so I get a bigger brush. OK, and I'm just going to click and uh, hold, drag, and I'm going to paint away some of these instances. And as you can see, now we can art direct this scatter very, very easily, right? Now, not only can you erase instances, as we mentioned, you can also brush new instances in or paint them in. And so you can do that real easily. Just switch over to the brush tool and then start painting new instances in, right? Now, if you're painting too many of them at once, what you can do is you can lower the painting rate to something like three and you're going to be painting a lot less of them in at the same time as you uh, click and drag and you know, paint things. Uh, vice versa obviously also works. If you want to paint a whole lot more of them in, just go with a higher painting rate value. And then you're going to be placing a lot of them in uh, with a single sort of stroke here. OK. OK. And there we have it. Those are the basics of working with the scatter instance brush. It's that easy to use. But now uh, the scatter instance brush has some additional functionality that makes working with it um, even easier and even more fun. And so we're going to be exploring this uh, additional functionality in the next couple of minutes. So let's just go over things in a one by one fashion. OK, so first up, let's talk about this really helpful toggle right here. We said we were going to talk about it and now is the time. Uh, it's the erase only placed instances toggle. So this one is available to you whenever you're in the erase mode. And essentially what this toggle does, if you have a toggle to off, you're going to be able to erase any instances that the scatter produces. OK, so if you just paint over any of the instances that you see, it's going to, you know, erase them. But now uh, let's say we've painted some um, instances in by hand here ourselves. OK, if we go back to our erase tool and if we now toggle erase only placed instances to on, uh, you're going to be able to see that we won't be able to erase the sort of non brushed in instances that the scatter produced. If I just click and hold here, you're going to be able to see that the erase functionality doesn't work on these, but it does work on the customly brushed in instances, as you can see. Right. So basically this toggle, uh, if you have a toggle to on, well, as the name suggests, it will only erase uh, sort of user brushed in instances. Now, the brush tool mode also has a toggle of its own, and it's this follow scattering rules toggle. And so we have a bit of a scatter set up here. It basically scattered trees on this mountain. And we also have some scattering rules set up. So uh, we have avoid collisions turned on. We also have the altitude limitation turned on. And so that's why the trees are not being scattered on top of this mountain, right? And if we have this toggle, toggle to on, and we try to paint on top of this mountain, you're going to be able to see that none of the instances are coming 
in. That is because our scattering rules are being respected. And in this particular case, the altitude limitation is the one that's really preventing us from painting anything on top of this mountain. Okay. But if we paint somewhere along this area right here, right, where most of the other instances are, uh, well, then you're going to be able to see that now we can paint in new instances. Again, because we are respecting the scattering rules and we are below this altitude limitation. One note here is that you can't just tell this toggle to have an effect on the altitude limitation scattering rule. It's either you respect all of the uh, rules that you've set up, all of the scattering rules that you've set up in your scatter, or you respect none of them by toggling this to off. When you have a toggle to off, you can just paint these instances anywhere you want to. Okay. Right now, another cool thing for when it comes to the uh, scatter instance brush functionality or tool here is that you have these really useful display options for it here. So if you go under the display and limits, I guess, sub menu here, you're going to be able to see that you have the, this brushed instance uh, colors options that you can tweak. So, for example, uh, this following uh, option here, what it basically is affecting is all of your instances that you've brushed in and uh, they, that you have set to follow the scatter rules. So right now they're set to be darker than the original color and the intensity of that color is basically 0 0.3. Okay. Or uh, it's actually like 30% of the original intensity. So if you lower this to zero, you're going to be able to see that our uh, instances that we painted in that are following the scatter rules are now completely black. Now you can set this color to, you know, the original color, um, or you can also set it to a custom color. So in this case, uh, if we have this uh, green color set here, you're going to be able to see that our instances that are following the scatter rules are, well, of this green color. Then you have the non-following instances uh, color that you can also tweak. So uh, much you have much the same options as you have for the instances that are following the scatter rules. So you can make them darker. You can adjust their intensity, right? You can uh, set a custom color. You can also have them have the same color as the you know the the instances that are following the scatter rules. In case that's what you would like. Now I personally prefer to set them to a custom color and then have them be different than the instances that are following the scatter rules. But, you know, ultimately it just comes down to uh, how you want to work, right? Now, just in case we, we think this is useful for you to know, uh, just in case you also have this edited instance color here that you can uh, tweak. So for example, if you moved some of the instances around here, right, you reposition them manually like this, right? Uh, what you can uh, then also do is you can have these have their own custom color. So for example, we're just going to set this color to yellow here. Sometimes you have to hit update now for uh, the uh, rules to update. And as you can see now, the repositioned, the individually repositioned instances, the edited instances have their own color as well. Okay. So really useful stuff that makes uh, organizing scenes all that much more easier. Now, another thing that might be useful to some of you is to know that whenever you're painting in uh, new instances, whenever you're brushing in new instances and you're not having them uh, follow the scattering rules. OK, so kind of like this. Well, whenever you're doing a painting action like this. OK, so again, whenever you are painting in instances that are not following the scattering rules, if you go and you change the underlying uh, sort of topology by moving polygons around, on that scattered surface, you're going to be able to see that these instances are going to stick uh, to the surface, right? Uh, whereas the rest of the scatter is going to essentially regenerate. Uh, it's going to be kind of like changing the seed number because it's going to, well, not regenerate, but recalculate is probably the better word. So just something that might be useful for some of you to know. Okay. Now, another thing that might be useful to a lot of you is this adaptive previous toggle here. Okay. So if we take a look at the performance of our viewport here in this particular scene, where we've got a lot of, uh, you know, these trees scattered on this mountain, you can see that it's very choppy to move around, right? So the viewport is really not quite as responsive as we would like it to be. But then if you toggle this toggle to on here, and if you then move around in your viewport, you're going to be able to see that all of these instances here turned into boxes. And so this makes the viewport a lot more performant and 
uh, you know, right now it's like 100% snappy and it's a lot easier to work with, right? Now, do note that this toggle here only works whenever you're dealing with the previous type set to full. So whenever you're displaying full polygonal meshes. And so that's an important note. Plus, you got to remember that if you're instancing, if you're scattering Corona proxies like we are in this case, right, you obviously also need to make sure that your Corona proxies viewport display method here is set to full mesh because otherwise you're not going to be uh, displaying these instances in their full, I guess, let's just call it polygonal glory, right? Now, regardless of whether we have the adaptive previous uh, toggle to on or off, you have the ability to tweak the max instance count and max polygon count. Okay, so let's first maybe play around with the max instances uh, count here. So we're just going to lower this value to 100, right? And so now this scatter is obviously only going to display 100 instances. And because there's actually more instances scattered than they are displayed, this text here turned yellow. So that, that's what that means. You're not displaying all the instances that are getting scattered. If you go with a high enough value, right, uh, where you're displaying all the instances, well, then uh, this text is not going to be colored, right? Now, uh, on top of that, you have this max polygon input field here. And so basically what this means is that you can limit the amount of polygons that are displayed by the scatter. So if we're just going to uh, go in here and remove a couple of zeros here, you're going to be able to see that we're turning all of these full meshes, uh, high poly meshes, we're turning them into low poly meshes. And you do this typically, you know, to keep some of that viewport performance uh, going on, right? And again, the same sort of thing happens here. If you're basically clipping your polygon count here, uh, that you're displaying, the text is, go is going to turn yellow, right? Which means that there are more polygons to be displayed than the value that you've entered in here. Now, the max polygon limiter here, if you will, has another neat sort of functionality built in. So if we type in a really, really low max polygon number here, you're going to be able to see that the text here turns blue. And what this basically means is that the polygon limit value that we said here is below the lowest possible polygon number, 40 visible instances. Okay, so in those situations, this is going to turn blue here. Now, maybe just as another uh, quick sort of thing to note about the max instance count here is that if you've manually painted in uh, a couple of instances, in our case, uh, these are these uh, sort of bright yellow instances, as you can see, if you go with a really low max instance count, the priority is kind of going to be on displaying those manually edited, manually brushed in instances. OK, uh, so in this case, we can, we've decided that we can only display 100 instances. And as you can see, we have a couple of those sort of normally scattered instances in here. But the priority is in displaying as much of the manually edited instances, manually painted in instances as possible. And this holds true for whenever you're, uh, you know, for whenever you're brushing in new instances or for whenever you're just editing instances and moving them around. OK, so just a quick note about uh, this neat functionality. All right. And with that, we're pretty much concluding this tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you've learned something new. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.